What's going on? Today we have a PS4 HDMI port that we have to replace. I don't know if you see in there, but the copper pieces are lifted off of the tab in there, so we're not getting a connection to the HDMI cord. Um, you guys are going to need a couple of tools in order to do this. Uh, first of all, you're going to need a T9 bit to undo all of the screws on the console. And then you also need a screwdriver. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what these look like. Alright, so we have a T9 bit here, which is like a star-shaped pattern. Let me try to focus this. I don't know why it's not focusing. Alright, so I'm just going to have to show you on here. So it's a T9H. Um, as you can see here, it has six points on it. This is one of the bigger ones, just to show you. Um, and then it's got a hole right there in the middle and the reason that you're going to need that is the screws have a little knob right in the center of them. Man, this thing won't focus. There's a little knob on the inside of these and you have to have a little hole in the tip in order to unscrew these. So yeah, that's the first thing you're going to need is a T9H bit um, in order to unscrew all the screws in there and then of course you're also going to need a screwdriver um, preferably like a smaller one you don't want a, a big screwdriver you just some, want something a little bit smaller let's see there's no size on this one just a smaller screwdriver and you could also find a T9H um, like handheld screwdriver um, I prefer to use a drill instead of a screwdriver though and then of course you're going to need a soldering machine um, with a hot air station. This is what I use, what I prefer to use. Uh, it's quicker. Uh, in my opinion, it's a little bit safer as well. So we're going to be using this to do all of our soldering. And then of course you're going to need some tweezers. And I like to use these guys right here. They're fine point, so they're a little bit better for you know doing smaller, smaller work and stuff like that. Um, I have a whole set of tweezers. This is actually the full set here. So as you can see, I have two out. What, the other one is like a wide one. I use that one occasionally when disassembling the console, but um, this is a really good brand too. This is You can find this on Amazon for pretty cheap. Um, and they got all sorts of different things in here. These are like fine tip ones, and then you have bigger faces on them, and then straight ones with fine tips on them too. And then of course, I use a microscope. Um, which if you don't have a microscope, that's fine. They also have these little screens that you can use, um, which actually scope in pretty, pretty good. Okay, let's come on. This one takes a little while to turn on. Here we go. And so you can like look under there and focus it and do all that fun stuff. So there you go. Let's focus there on that metal plate. Um, I prefer to use a microscope though, it's a little bit easier for me and what I do. And then of course you're going to need um, some flux and this is like a, what are those things called, a uh, wire mesh sponge, um, wire sponge and uh, that's for cleaning off the soldering tip uh, whenever you're soldering because you want to have clean solder on there. Which brings us to our next thing which is solder. Um, I tend to use a, let's see, what is the 6040 solder, so it's leaded and uh, unleaded as well, but having the leaded in there makes it melt at a lower temperature, which is really helpful. Now that we have all the tools situated, we're going to go ahead and do the disassembly. Um, so on the back here of the PS4, there's going to be four screws, one, two, three, four. Uh, some of them only have one, two right here, and these don't have screws in them, uh, depending on which model that you have. Uh, as you can see, I already took those screws out. Those are just the T9 bit screws. And with this model, you just slide off this small piece here, lift up on the front, and push back. This one isn't screwed in in any way. And then there'll be two screws right here that are both T9s. Uh, you're going to want to unscrew those ones. And then you can just pull up on the front here and pull up on the side over here and lift up and just kind of jimmy it back here until we get that off. Now for the bottom, 
we're just going to unscrew these screws and once you have those unscrewed you can go ahead and just pop that one off, slide it out a little bit and then grab the console, pull the console out. So now we have the full console and we can start working on it. <clears throat> so this is where your hard drive is. Uh, we're going to need to access the motherboard which is underneath this aluminum plate here and we're going to have to take out the power supply as well. So but we're going to go ahead and take out the power supply now. Uh, on some models the power supply is screwed in uh, through that aluminum plate there on the back. Um, on this one it is not I believe. Yeah I'm pretty sure this one's not so the power supply is only held in with these screws here. But we still need to take it out because the motherboard connects to the power supply inside of here. So we're going to go ahead and use our little screwdriver here and take out the two screws on the end, one there, and one here. See this is why I use, um, this is why I like to use tweezers for the removal process as well. Because you can just slide them in there and pull up on those tabs, it's a lot easier than trying to use your fingers. Oh, and of course we're going to need something to hold everything in. I like to use uh, an empty Zen cartridge here. These are the screws from the panels. I'm just going to throw those in there. Uh, I'm going to set these ones to the side for the power supply so I know which ones are for the power supply there. And then we're going to take our T9 bit and you could either use the T9 that's like a screwdriver or you can use a drill T9 bit which is what I prefer to use. We're just going to take out these three screws here. Now that we have that loose, we can go ahead and take it out. So when removing this, uh, you want to be careful not to yank up on it too hard. Um, it can break the connection to the motherboard. Um, so you just want to grab over here. There's like a little tab right here. Let me show you. There's a little tab right here and right here on this side as well. And we're just going to pull up on those tabs. both sides and then we're just going to lift straight up and then tilt over here and the reason why you don't want to pull up too hard is you can break this connector right here and it's just a mess to try to solder that back on so this guy you just want to pull it straight out set the power supply to the side now we need to undo all these connectors in here uh, for this little guy here it just pops off we're just going to use our tweezers to do that and then for this one you want to pull the gate back on it and then just slide it out like so and then there's one more in here and that one we're just going to pull up just like we did with the power supply and pull it out now that we have those we can go ahead and flip it back over and we're going to take out the hard drive next so we're going to unscrew that and then the hard drive just slides out we're going to put that to the side now we can start disassembling and get down to the motherboard here. We're going to go back to our T9 bit here and just unscrew all these screws. Now that we took all those ones out, we have two more screws in here um, that we need to get out. So we're going to go ahead and unscrew those. And this plate here is separate. It holds down the APU. And you will need to put this back on because if you don't put it back on, the system will not turn on or it will give you the blue light of death. So we want to make sure that we put this back on because that is very important. Now we can just go ahead and take this guy off here. and we have access to the motherboard now. There is one more connection here. Um, a lot of these PS4s are different. This one has one where you gotta pull up on it. So I like to put my tweezers under there. It limits breakage. It's really easy to break them if you use your fingers and try to pull it up. 
So now that we have that undone, we can go ahead and take the motherboard out. And you just want to lift up on the back here. And then lift it up to about, what would you say, 20 degrees possibly. And then kind of slide it back towards you. And the motherboard will come out great there. So as you can see, we're obviously going to have to change the thermal paste on this because that is dried up. Um, there's where the power supply connects to and that is the HDMI port that is broken that we need to fix. So we're going to go ahead and move this over to our soldering station and remove that HDMI port and put a new one on there. Alright, now we have the motherboard over here at our soldering station uh, with our microscope here. Let's see. Microscope. There's all the ports right there and analogs from other consoles and controllers. Um, you can use what I use here, which is like a cardboard box that was like taped closed. Um, as you can see, it's been burnt here. It's fine, whatever. As long as you don't catch anything on fire, you just want to make sure that you slant this out to the edge so that when you apply heat to it, it doesn't catch on fire. Um, you can also use like, they have these like blue pads that you can use for soldering and stuff like that. But this is just what I prefer. It holds it at a nice height for me to be able to work with this a little bit easier. Um, so first thing we want to do is put some flux on this is our flux remember and they have like syringe flux and stuff like that this flux works really good for me um, it's almost like butter uh, and it makes it's easy to clean up uh, it doesn't have like an awful stench and it works really well when it comes to soldering so now we're just gonna go ahead and uh, start up our soldering iron get that warmed up and then on top of that we're gonna start up our hot air I'm going to show you guys that real quick. Alright, so this is for the soldering iron. As you can see, that's warming up. This one here will be for my hot air, um, which when I turn on, it starts blowing hot air out right here. Yep, already hot. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, apply the heat to the board and take that port off. Alright, so we're going to put the hot air underneath the board here. Oh, I need to rearrange this real quick. Let's see move this over so we can see it a little better. Alright, we're just going to apply that hot air underneath that port. And we're waiting for, one, the flux will fall back as you see it, and it'll go exactly where you need it to go, which is on the pins on the back of the port and on the feet holes there. So we're just going to heat this up. Now this one may not loosen um, on other ports, uh, depending on what the damage is, it may loosen easily, but this is pushed out here to the side, and this one's pushed out here to the side, which makes it a little bit harder for it to be removed. So you have to make sure that the solder on here is completely melted, and at a certain point it'll get like shiny. Let's see if I can get the light on that for you to see that. It's going to be hard to tell. But the, uh, the solder there on the feet will go from like a dull crate color to like a shiny color. So as you can see here, it's already loose. So we just need to pull that up. And now we need to suck. So I use this little sucker here. It's a little bit cold right now and has flux stuck inside of it. But you push this little button here and it sucks that little plunger up through here. So as you can see, we've got junk in there still. We're just going to use that, suck the solder out of here. Alright, so now that we have the solder out of the feet holes there, um, we can go ahead and go over to the port and get the port prepped and ready to be put on. Alright, so this is our replacement port here. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put some flux on these pins in the back and then we're going to go ahead and put some of our solder on there. Um, it just makes it easier when you go to put the port on for the solder to mix with the solder on the board. Um, it gives it a nice, uh, nice clean connection there. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and take our flux here. Let's see. We're just going to place it on the back of these pins. You don't need a bunch of flux, you just need a good amount there. And what flux does is it helps to transfer the heat 
and so all the heat isn't on one individual pin. Now it'll be on all of the pins together, uh, which will stop bridging from happening when you're putting the solder on the pins there. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and grab our soldering iron here. Alright, so we got our soldering iron here, and as you can see, it's not like shiny on the tip, it's kind of like a dull color, and this is already heated up, it's not cold. So this is what we're going to use uh, the steel wool for, and we're just going to dab this in there until it's nice and shiny on the tip. Like so. So now that we got a nice little shine to it, we can go ahead and put solder on these pins back here. So as you can see I did bridge these pins over here which is fine I'm not looking under the microscope and I can unbridge that. Um, tried doing it without the microscope it's kind of hard so I'm gonna go ahead and look under the microscope and fix that real quick. Alright so now we have those pins unbridged there. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and lay some new solder down here on the pads as well. Alright, so there's the pads there. It's going to be kind of hard to see once I put my microscope over it. Uh, light, light is necessary when soldering. You really need as much light as possible. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and put some flux on those pads. And like I said, this helps transfer heat. So when you go to put the new solder on, it'll mix with that old solder really well when you put flux on it. And then we're just going to take our new solder here we're going to hold the wire and then we're just going to tap it to the tip of the soldering iron as we put it on the flux and then we're just going to move it across those pads until we get a nice coverage now that we have new solder on all those pads there we can go ahead and drop the new port on top And then we're going to go ahead and apply heat from the bottom again. And as that heats up, I'm going to look through my microscope and we're going to push down on the back of the port here so that those pins on the back of the port connect to the pads on the motherboard. You got to wait for it to uh, go from like that gray color to a silver color. And uh, if you look at the solder on the back there, you'll notice that the solder starts to turn into a liquid. You just want to hold pressure on the back and just wait for that solder to turn gray again. And once it, once it turns gray, you can go ahead and take pressure off the port. Um, always check the pins on the back, make sure that they're not moving, so I'm going to go ahead and check those real quick with my fine tip tweezers here. I just basically touch one of the pins and just move over slightly, see if any of the pins are loose. Alright, so there's all the pins in the back there, and I just take the tweezers here and just put it in between each one of those pins. Just kind of put a little bit of pressure, you don't want to put a lot, you just want to make sure that each one of those are secured. I um, already checked them, but all of those are secured right now. So now we can go ahead and put solder on the feet holes here on the bottom side, and then we're going to blow it up with the hot air. Alright, now we're going to flip the board over. And on the bottom here, we can go ahead and see that feet are right here with no solder on them. We're just going to clean that up a little bit with the razor here bunch of gunk gets stuck inside of this stuff. And cleaning it up uh, will help the solder stick better. If you don't clean it, the solder will not want to stick to it. Um, sometimes the, so the solder doesn't want to stick to it even if it's clean. Uh, and then you kind of have to like scratch the board to get the copper to show again. We'll see if it sticks real quick. Now, same thing, we're going to go ahead and grab our new solder and a soldering iron. We're just going to apply little blobs to the feet here so 
one doesn't look like it's sticking too well. That one's stuck. See, sometimes it doesn't want to stick, so we may have to scratch the feet. Okay, so the front one's stuck, but the back one's dead. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here, and we're just going to scratch around very carefully around the feet here until we can get some copper to show. And this will just help the solder stick to the board a little bit better around these areas. solder on there. Woo. Just bounce some uh, solder off and it hit my leg. So now we're just going to go ahead and add new solder. Okay, if these bridge it's perfectly fine. It's not going to cause any issues there. Bridging actually is kind of helpful when it comes to the feet here. Sometimes it helps the solder stick better. So now that we have those in there, we can go ahead and flip the board back over. And then we're going to apply heat to the bottom again. Let me get you guys at a better angle. Alright. So now as you can see, the feet holes don't have any solder in there. We're just going to put the hot air on the bottom here. Blow that hot air up. And what that'll do is it'll push the solder. The solder balls that we put on the bottom there, it'll push it up those little feet holes right where we need them. So as you can see the solder is starting to push up through there. You just want to make sure that it does it to both sides. I might have to look under here real quick, make sure that that's working. And as we push that up, it's going to loosen the rest of the port. Um, so we just want to make sure that as all that solder gets loose again, we want to hold down some pressure on the back of the port there. Make sure that those pins stay connected. Now you're just going to hold it down until that solder turns gray again, goes from like the liquid to the solid. Right, and it looks like it's stuck. We're gonna go ahead and check those pins again, make sure that they're stuck on there the way that we want them to be. All right, and again, we're just gonna come in here and check those pins. You don't have to check every one of them. I do it anyways, because it's better to just make sure, because sometimes like one pin will not be connected, and that's all you need is one pin not connected to not have video displayed. So now we got all those pins, all those ones are good, and as you can see the solder here on the feet holes sucked up real nicely. Um, it's also sucked up there on the side and on this side real nicely. And we don't have a mess of flux or anything, which is why I like using the flux that I use. Um, so now we're just going to go ahead and let this cool down, and then we're going to replace the thermal paste there. All right, so now we can go ahead and use a Q-tip, which I forgot to tell you in the beginning, but I'll put a list of everything that you need in the description. We're just going to push out the uh, old thermal paste from the sides here and get all that out first. And um, on the top here, you can just brush it away. Now sometimes it doesn't come off this easy, um, like some of it will still be stuck on there, which we're going to use alcohol for. So we're going to go ahead and put some alcohol on a cotton swab. So we're going to grab a regular cotton swab and just put some alcohol on it here. And now we can just go ahead and clean the rest of that off there. So this is the APU here that we're cleaning up. This is basically the brains of the system. This is also what causes blue light of death if the connection's underneath it. 
um, disconnect or have cracks in them or anything like that, which can happen with age and, um, yeah, basically just age and time. And then if there's like overheating issues from not replacing the thermal paste at all, um, it can also cause the blue light of death. So now we have it nice and shiny. We're going to go ahead and put some new thermal paste on there. All right. So for our thermal paste here, we're going to be using this stuff, which you can look it up just by HY 710. Uh, works pretty good. You want to make sure that this looks like glass pretty much. You see how it looks like a mirror. And then we're just going to put a little dab on here. And you can mix this around or you can just leave it as a dab. They say to put like a, a thin layer on there. Um, this little blob here will spread out evenly once we put it back together. I've already cleaned the, thermal, the old thermal paste off here. Um, and there's the new thermal paste. We're just going to go ahead and slide the motherboard back in. We'll slide it in at that same angle it's about like 20 degrees or so and then you're just gonna lay it down we want to plug that fan connector back up there once we have that plugged up you want to make sure all these thermal pads are here too because they go on here and they stop the system from overheating as well I'm just gonna go ahead and put that aluminum plate back on there we want to make sure that we screw these in uh, this plate, when you go to put it in, you want to make sure that the bowed side is down. And you don't want to bend that either, you just want to leave it the way that it is. And then just screw those two screws in with your normal screwdriver. And then we can go ahead and start putting the screws back in. T10 screws, or T9 screws. We're going to leave two screws out when we do this. We're going to leave this one and this one out. And that's because those ones go to the panels. I'm not stripping the screws, I promise. I just have a dull bit here that I need to replace. Sometimes not all these screws go back in because they tend to break the uh, screw holes on the inside there, um, depending on how well you take care of your console, which is perfectly fine. Because you don't need all these screws in, you just want to make sure that these ones go in right. So now we're just going to slide the hard drive back in, screw that in there. We're going to flip it back over and we're going to plug all these little connections back in here. So the ribbon cable just slides in until that little tab clicks. This connector here, you just push it down. And then, of course, the little antenna thing right here. We're just going to go ahead and make sure that that's perfectly aligned on that circle there. Push that one down until it's secured. And then we want to go ahead and plug this connector back in here for the power supply. And then we're just going to lay it down. Make sure you don't bend these pins here. So we'll lay it down to where it's even. Push down. And then we're going to go ahead and secure that back together here. So these ones are the regular screws here. And then we're going to use our T9 screws screw in the three points that we have left. Alright, now that we have those screwed in, we can go ahead and put the bottom panel back on here. We're just going to slide it in on the front here, and then clip it down on the back. And then for the top here, we just want to slide this one forward, make sure that this is aligned here, and just clip it into place there. And then we're going to have to screw those screws back in. So silver screws go on the inside. The black screws go on the outside on the back. And then we're just going to lay that one on there and just pull it in until it's nice and secured there. And then we're just going to go ahead and put these black screws back here in the back. 
just like so. Now that we have all those screws in there, we can go ahead and take it over and test it. All right, so we have everything plugged up here and our HDMI port replacement was successful. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe.